Hello, welcome to Insight, I'm Wendy Brokaw. And I'm Mary Louise Van Atta. You remember during the holidays when you put money in the red sure. kettles, the Salvation Army red kettles mm -hmm. around town, and uh, did you ever stop to think, where did all that money go? Well, here we are going to be talking exactly about that. Would you please welcome our guests from the local Salvation Army? We're so glad you're here today. Well, so, you know, we are familiar with the kettles. So we, and, and a lot of the times that's the only thing we know about the Salvation Army. Can you guys give us a, maybe a little 101 on what you do and how you all fit into the Salem community? Yeah, the, well, we start with the kettles. Mm -hmm. um, they are out during Christmas time. We are out for about 30 days during the Christmas season. Mm -hmm. We're all over both Marion and Polk County. We're in Monmouth, Dallas, uh, Independence. We're over in uh, Staten and Silverton and mm -hmm. of course Salem and Kaiser. And each of the dollars that we bring in in the kettles actually stays in the community where we rang the bell at. So all the money that we brought in the state and will go back to that community through our social services. Most people locally are well aware of the Croc Center, which has its own set of programs. But uh, how do you all operate? Independently? Together? How? Well, we don't. Uh, the finances that come into the Croc Center mm -hmm. stay within the Croc Center. The oh. finances that come into the shelter stay within the shelter, and the dollars that come in for social services stays within the social services, whether it be the social services in Salem for, or the social services in Dallas or the, you know, Polk County. So what we do is each one has to stand on their own. Uh, there is no big brother somewhere coming in and handing us dollars and saying, hey, go do this. It has to be supported by the community we're in. So when we go into a community, we find out what the needs are. We don't want to duplicate needs, but we want to be able to take care of the needs that aren't there. And so as we come into that community, the community has to support that program. So the money that we raise within the Croc Center stays within the Croc Center, which pays for the programs that we do, uh, the summer programs, the youth programs, uh, the senior programs, and each of the things that we do there, the membership and our scholarship program. It's a big job you have for Marion and Polk counties, all the social services uh, under the Salvation Army umbrella. What are they? Yeah, absolutely. So social services is broken down into two unique um, programs, which we assist um, families and um, unsheltered homeless people who are looking for a place to stay. So in Dallas, we at our academy building at the Resource Center, uh, we do have a representative who assists with uh, rental, 72-hour uh, notices, utility shutoffs, um, in addition to folks who are looking for some sort of um, assistance with their emergency requests. Here in our Salem office, we do have our staff which um, oversee our food pantry where we're assisting a little over 850 families um, each month to come get a food box. Um, on top of that, we do have um, resources uh, to assist with families who have a 72-hour notice, also a utility shutoff uh, for their different energy bills. So a lot of work is taking place. Um, and then also at our lighthouse shelter here located in Salem, um, right now we have about 60 residents who are currently men and women um, who are without shelter that we're able to house them overnight in our program as well. I understand that that shelter used to be 24 hours a day and now it's overnight. Why is that? One of the reasons we started looking at going to a 90-day overnight shelter was we had, one of our funders had passed away who was giving us a huge chunk of money to keep that thing going, and we had to look, relook at it, say, how can we do this? Because we don't have money somewhere else to put into it. Mm -hmm. And so when we looked at it, we looked at this 90-day program, which in hindsight was the right thing to do because we're seeing a great success with the program. We've got some stories to tell. Actually, we have a beautiful story to tell. About Cookie. Yes. And we're yes. going to see some video. Would you please tell me what we're about to see about Cookie? It's, a, it's an amazing story. Yeah, absolutely. So we came into contact with Cookie. She's um, had a, a long life of just really struggles and being mm -hmm. homeless for, for a, a long period of time here, actually, on the streets of, of Salem in the community and being homeless by herself as a, as a female is very challenging um, to be on the streets by yourself. So in the connection that we had with Cookie, she approached us, she was looking for shelter. Um, she went through various programs, but really felt that at the Lighthouse program that not only did she find shelter, but she found that support, more support, spiritual support um, to really help sustain and move forward and get um, reestablished back in society. So a lot of great things going on. I'd love to take a look at this video. Oh, good, yeah. thank you. Well. And I, we have her permission mission to be able to show it so yes, we're we very proud okay. to be able to let's to take a look it. at the video right now this is Christine her friends at the shelter call her cookie today she's taking me to where she lay her head for three months 
She didn't want to tell her story. She was embarrassed. She has adult children, former co-workers. She didn't want anyone to know. When she found out that the very people who helped make the lighthouse shelter possible to her and to so many others, she knew it was time to open up. So, what kind of memories does this bring back for you? In my puzzle book over here. Uh, this is terrible. It's, it's bittersweet because I know there are so many other women and people, men alike, children that are out there in this situation that may feel hopeless, may not have some place to go. This change in my life of the Salvation Army Lighthouse Shelter has given me the ability to find work, to be successful at a job and it's it is it is in a production company it's just it's just production work it's manufacturing but it's mine and I get a shower every day and I can wash my clothes and I can have a healthy meal and there's people there that work there that genuinely care about me and they want to see me succeed there's power behind that and in that power that breathes life into me I now look forward to my own home again. I look forward to homelessness rehabilitation. And when you don't have a steady place to lay your head, that's hard to do. Here comes my morning wake up call. Your morning wake up call. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Really wow. Yes. And the train, that was not planned. <laughs> that actually yeah. happened just, wow. what an amazing. And kind of scary too, it looks like. Yeah. Powerful so, stuff. How's yeah. she doing? How's Cookie doing? Cookie's doing amazing. She's doing well. She's back on her feet. Um, she's back in the house on her own and, really? um, and sustained and doing great. Uh, what kind of ways can people help the Salvation Army in Marion and Polk Counties? People can volunteer. They can come out and volunteer at our shelter, feed, maybe even helping feed one night uh, oh, with wow. the folks there. Mm -hmm. um, really? They can come and help by boxing, walking through people through our uh, social services to get food boxes. They can uh, give dollars to either the shelter. If they've got a heart for people who are living on the street and, and need a place to live, they can give to the shelter, mm -hmm. uh, give to the social services. And the neat thing about it is when you write on a check out and you put it down there on the bottom that this is going to the shelter, it goes to the shelter. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, it, you know, they can, there's many ways to help uh, throughout the year. Well, Jason, what does the shelter itself need? Anything? Absolutely, yeah. So the shelter is always in request of um, um, hygiene um, items, yeah. um, different um, pillowcases and bedding supplies. Sure. Those are always in need, but definitely socks is another, underwear garments, things of that nature will always... You just don't open. think of these yeah. things, but yeah. they really, Absolutely. really need them. And yeah. how do they get in touch with the Salvation Army Salem right here? Yeah, absolutely. So our Family Services Office is located here on Front Street, 1977 Front Street. Mm -hmm. um, and they also we can be reached at 503-585-6688. And then also you can find us on our website, which is salem.crockcenter.org. Under the social services tab, you can find all the information for our programs and the other things that we're doing in the area. Great. And we always know where to find you during the holidays. <laughs> That's well, great. Captain Dan and Jason, thank you so very thank much you. for joining us today. This Absolutely. was a really enlightening program. Much I didn't know myself. Yeah, and I'm wonderful. really glad that you gave us the story behind the red cap. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having us and, and being a part of this to allow us to tell a little bit of our story. Love and thank it. you for joining us today on Insight. I'm Wendy Brokaw. And I'm Mary Louise Vanatta, and we'll see you next time.